Let us pray. In the name of the God who loves us generously, graciously, and without limit. Amen. If if there's nothing else to take away from this period of lockdown, one thing I am sure of is that there are some amazingly beautiful gardens dotted around the parish. Those of you I know who are gardeners have been spending quite a bit of your lockdown busy, busy, busy out in your gardens, planning and planting, weeding and sorting. And I have had a sneak peek of some gardens and they truly are looking stunning. And of course, I mentioned gardening because of our texts. Jesus tells us a story about a gardener, about a sower who goes to sow, but it's a very strange way of going about gardening. This sower isn't fussy about where he scatters the seeds. He scatters them everywhere. This is our text from the Gospel of Matthew. And then in our text from Isaiah, we hear that the earth is watered so that the seeds might grow. In both texts, God is shown as a gardener, God who is the sower, who sows, who scatters his seed words extravagantly, who scatters the word everywhere. So we've got two readings on a similar theme with two different audiences, both alike and yet unalike. There are two groups of people who have been born of the one nation. They are God's own people. And both groups are wondering if they've been forsaken. Both are wondering if, if God is still speaking. So let's unpack our readings. The background to this particular extract from Isaiah is one of sadness and unmitigated sorrow. The harps are hanging forlornly on the trees as the waters of the Tigris and Euphrates flow past. And at the riverbank, the people gather and sit. They're exiles, castaways. They're the conquered ones. And weeping, they wonder how, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? So we have that text from Isaiah. It's also a psalm. It's also a very famous song by Boney M. So there they sit by the rivers, numb with grief. They are the flotsam and jetsam cast upon the shores of sad misfortune. Despair takes hold. God has stopped speaking. There are no words from God. Or so it seems. They're wrong. In the midst of their Babylonian captivity, the words of the prophet Isaiah remind the Jewish exiles that God is faithful, that God hasn't finished with them yet, that God's word won't fail, that God is still speaking. Turning to our text from Matthew, several centuries have passed and we find the people of God living not in exile, but under occupation. So once again, there are a conquered people. They find that their homeland is ripe for the picking and that the Imperial Roman army do it ever so efficient, ever so efficiently. There's new laws, new taxes, even new punishments, crucifixion. The ways of the Romans are not their ways. They chafe under the yoke and they mutter. Surely God has forsaken them. God has stopped speaking. God has nothing, no word to give them. Or so it seems. But they too are wrong. In the midst of the Roman occupation, the words of a young rabbi scatter through the land like seeds for those who have got ears to hear. God is faithful. God isn't finished with them yet. God's word will not fail for here in flesh and blood and bone. God's word is walking right there among them, is, is one of them. And God is most definitely in Jesus still speaking. So what are the words that are being scattered? What's being sown by God to the gardener, to the exiles and to the conquered ones under occupation? These seeds are words of the kingdom, of God's reign, of the good news. These seeds are words of comfort and reassurance. 
Take heart, dear ones, I have not forgotten you. These seeds are words of hope. Look up, lift up your heads. These words are words of freedom and peace. Look up for your liberation is at hand, so rejoice. These are words of renewal. I am the God who refreshes and restores, like the snow, like the rain watering the land. These are words of life that nurture and nourish, abundant life, resurrection. And these are words that never fail, for God is faithful for all time. Into the wasteland of exile and occupation, God, the gardener, sows the seeds of love. God is still speaking. And how are these words being scattered? Freely, unstintingly, generously, without measure, and heedless to the type of ground the seed might fall upon, God sows the seeds of love without prejudice or distinction, not not judging in advance who is worthy or who is unworthy to receive them. The seeds are for everyone. The seeds are for all. For the seeds are scattered in the abundance of God's generosity and grace. They are scattered far and wide. The word sent throughout the whole world. Scattered on the paths meant for peace, but which are so often consumed by the hawks of war. Scattered in the rocky ground of social injustice and deprivation that withers and destroys the soul. Scattered in the thorn bushes of addiction, of neglect, of apathy, of violence. Scattered too in soil that gives the optimum conditions for flourishing and for growth. In the light places, in the dark places, in all of the places in between. God sows the seeds of love. For God is still speaking, speaking to the exiles, speaking to those living under foreign occupation, speaking to us. Even now, as we begin to emerge ever so tentatively, to emerge from behind our doors where we've been in lockdown. I've said before that I've often have this picture of Jesus in my mind's eye. I see him walking the highways and dusty byways with his mates, his disciples, and they're all just walking together and he's just chatting with them. And he's telling them about God's kingdom, telling them about God's love. I can hear him saying, you are loved, you are precious in God's sight. So rejoice and be glad and Tell others this good news. Tell others that they too are loved beyond measure. Jesus is sowing the seeds of love, scattering words of hope and life and liberation and encouraging all who follow him to go and to do likewise, to sow the seeds of love in a sometimes very unlovely and unloved world. It's a world that contains places where people feel lost, feel forsaken, people who are in despair. And if they did believe in a God, would wonder why God has stopped talking. Or so it seems to them. In the midst of this world, in the footsteps of the sower, we too are sowers, loved and precious in God's sight and called to scatter the seeds, the word of God, wherever and whenever we can. To scatter the seeds of God's word extravagantly, generously, joyfully, mirroring the wideness of God's mercy. To show the good news that the kingdom of heaven is within us while giving thanks for the fullness of the kingdom yet to come. We are called to treat God's love, God's justice, and God's blessing as precious as these are, as, as if they were absolutely limitless in supply, because for one simple reason, they are, they absolutely are. As we sow the seeds of God's word, so we proclaim to the world that God is faithful, that God is not finished with any of us yet, that God's word will not fail, that God in love and in grace is still speaking.
speaking words of love that will burst forth into blossom 30, 60, 100 times over. What good news. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for forever sowing the seeds of life, for giving us the word of life that is Jesus, for making us living seeds, tiny yet fruitful, the scattering of your hand, beloved and precious in your sight. Give us ears to hear, to listen to your voice, for in faith we know that you are still speaking. Amen. Having heard the word read, having heard the word preached, let's now sit with the word, let's sit with scripture as we meditate a while upon the parable of the sower.